<laughs> Hi there, welcome to Art Ed series here at DSI. And today we're gonna do a little more of a craft project, something a little bit more fun and less traditional fine art. Today we're making a grocery goblin. <laughs> As you can see here, this is a grocery bag that um, has been painted and it's just one of those reusable bags that you can get at like Aldi's or Walmart or anything like that purchased for a couple bucks. Um, we got ours from Dollar Tree and the name of the brand is Juncture. Um, so you can see here and you can get that, it's reusable. It's pretty great. Um, it's a little thinnish. It's kind of like in between, not super thick, not super thin, and it's great for painting on. What we're gonna do here first is we are gonna go ahead and we have to put in our filler. Now you're gonna get a piece of cardboard that should fit your bag if you signed up for our series to go along with this. And it'll be pre-cut and you can see that it goes inside like this. So what we're gonna do is we wanna make sure that this side here, the pocket side is on the back actually. Now, when you're done with this, you can always paint both sides, but today I'm only gonna be painting one to show you as an example. So gently make sure that it goes all the way to the bottom. You have another piece of cardboard that's been provided, and this is gonna go in just right on top of it so that it fills the top part. And what we're doing is we're trying to make sure that when you're painting, it doesn't go through to both sides like this. This is just kind of a barrier to stop that. Count down to five. Five, four, three, two, one. So what you're gonna need today are a couple different supplies, some that you'll have at home and some will supply. You're gonna to wanna to get out some paper towels of some kind. We just use uh, brown shop tools around here, or towels. And then we're gonna provide you with red um, and white here, white and red acrylic paint. Not that big, of course, you're gonna get a little bit. And then you can either use a big brush at home like this fan brush is a really great one right here like this. And when it's ready to be used, I'll show you how to use that one. I'm a fan of a fan brush, ha ha ha, a fan of a fan brush. But seriously, it's a great brush. But if you don't have one like that, you can use the one that's been provided or you can use a larger brush around your home. You don't wanna go anything much bigger than this, which is a large filbert, size 15, okay? So we'll be using those two brushes today and then you're gonna want one little detail brush of some kind. I'm using a very small filbert brush here, but you can use whatever you want as long as it's very small, okay? You're also gonna be supplied with some construction paper. Big old sheet of construction paper. It may be any color of the rainbow, but it'll be about this size. It'll be pretty large. And the reason for that is that we really need to be able to cut that um, in half. So go ahead and fold that in half right now the long way, not the thin way, or the, the narrow way, like so, and set that right there for a moment. You're also going to be provided with a styrofoam cup like this, which is where we're gonna use our eye circle from. It's gonna be a stamping mechanism, okay? And then we'll also provide you with a styrofoam plate or two. All right, there you go. So the first thing that we are going to do here today, it's very simple we are going to take our folded construction paper and we're gonna cut it into three slices. If it's hard for you to measure visually, you can always make a line with a piece of um, other paper that you can kind of trace along or you can just plain old cut it. I'm gonna go for just plain old cutting it. Like so. And they don't need to be very big. And then uh, I have actually technically four here, but the third one is just extra in case we mess one up. Okay, we'll put this little guy off to the side over here. Now, what we're gonna do over here is we're gonna go ahead and fold this one over like that. Okay, we'll put these two off to the side here. And you wanna pick one side, it doesn't matter if it's top or bottom, don't do it on these sides. And what you're gonna do is you're going to make little teeth. So you're going to cut one strip like this back and forth, like so. Don't worry about the exact size. If you're nervous that it's gonna be something for you to visually measure, that's okay. You can go ahead and draw it on there first and then trace it. It's very simple. This is actually more of like a 15 minute craft. I'm slowing it down just a little bit just so you can see. 
I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. And of course, since it's been folded multiple times, you have a repetitive design. Okay, so you got that right there, super cute. Now what we're gonna do here is, ooh, this one's missing a little toothy area, that's okay. What we're gonna do here next is we are gonna go ahead and make the tongue area. Now the tongue area is a little different. We're gonna to want to go ahead and actually draw that on, and I'm gonna show you how that works. Okay, so hold on one second. Count down to five. Five. Four, three, two, one. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these pieces and we're gonna fold it over one time like this. So if you look at it from the side, you have a little opening like that and then two little pieces like that. So what you're gonna do here is you're going to make a series of triangles like so. You can go down and then up, down, up, down, up, down, up, like that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and cut those. So we have these cute little monster teeth. You can make them deeper too if you want. If you don't like that angle, you can go up like this. If you want a more fang-like and less toothy, you can do that. You can change them up a little bit so there's different sizes. Whatever you want to do, that's okay. It's your monster bag. You can have fun with it. And you can change the eyes too, guys. You can do whatever you like. I'm just showing you an example. But your monster bag can be different if you want. That's okay. So I'm going to open it up, and then I have my teeth here. There you go. I've got some monster teeth going. Now, this little toothy here is a little weird, but that's okay. I kind of dig that. I like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this off to the side now for a moment. And what we need to do here is we need to go ahead and make the tongue. Now the tongue is a little tricky. I'm gonna bring back the original monster bag here. And what we really wanna do is we wanna trace this shape, the black part here that's over there. We don't wanna trace the tongue. Otherwise it gets very confusing. So we're gonna set it right up above here, this part there so we can see. Okay, and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go up a little ways. Whoops, let me scoot that over a teensy bit. Right about there so it's in the middle of my monster tongue, like so. I'm gonna go up, down, up, and down like that. So it kind of looks like some mountains, but as long as this one here is much bigger, you're in good shape, okay? And we're actually going to use this side, not this side. So we're going to go ahead and cut this part off here. So we don't want the part that looks like the tongue. We want the other part. If you screw up and you use the wrong part, you can probably still fake it anyway. It's okay. Okay, so that's the part that's going to look like the tongue. We set it here so you can see. We don't want to use this part because we're actually going to be painting inversely. See, kind of matches there a little bit. Put that guy off the side. What we really want is this part right here because what we, when we paint, we're gonna paint downward and this blocks off everything around it, see? So we'll set this back over here and we will go ahead and paint our tongue first and we're gonna put it a little less than halfway down. So this should be kind of right about there. And if you see the stripe that's on your bag here, it's, uh, I'd say probably three to four inches there. Now, if you're one of those people who gets really nervous and you have to go ahead and sketch everything out, please just kind of put that away for a moment. Don't do that to yourself right now. Monster bag is supposed to be relaxed and fun. So we're gonna go ahead and get out our plate. And what we wanna do is we wanna mix some pink. Pink is half red, half white. We don't need a lot. And you're gonna go ahead and get um, out the examples that we sent along with you, the different mixtures and you can go ahead and mix some of those together yourself. Now, I'm gonna show you how to use this brush here, as well as this one today. This is a fan brush, okay? And with a fan brush, you really want it to be extra dry. And it's really good at kind of soaking something up and then trailing off gently. So I'm getting the extra stuff out here, like that. Getting extra water out. If yours is dry, you're in good shape. 
and you're gonna wanna go ahead and fan it out like that, kind of make sure that it spreads out a little bit, like so. Now, when the paint goes in there, it's gonna fill those gaps in and then it'll close up a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix these together now so I get myself a nice pink color. Cute, cute little pink. Okay, and I think that pink is very, very bright, so I'm gonna go ahead and dull that down a little bit with some over here, some red. There are you. Going back and forth. Now, what I have on here is quite a significant amount of red paint or pink paint, so I have to be careful. Now, what some people do is that they tape this down but I just go along and hold it and then make sure that I'm paying attention to the different spots I'm doing this in. So I'm gonna start here like this, holding my hand down, or you can pinch like this. I'm gonna take one hand and drag downward. Oh, I know, right? Scary. But notice how I'm doing it, I'm doing slow motion. Press down and drag away. Press down and drag away. We're gonna do that several times. Pressing down and dragging away like so. Gonna move over this way, press down, drag away. Oops. You can do that all the way to the end. Holding gently, pressing down and dragging away. Like so. And you notice that it's going to dry up and it's gonna get a little bit darker because it's on a black surface, which is perfect. We don't want it too, too bright. You can use a little bit of the brighter pink, just a teeny bit towards the top there if you mix some. Oop, my paper shifted a little bit, gotta be careful about that. Bring it down like this, okay. Very nice. Looks pretty good. Hold that side down there. All right, cute, 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 cute. Now, what I wanna do over here is I wanna go ahead and take this and I'm gonna turn my brush sideways like this. Oh, I'm sorry. Count down to five. Five, four, three, two, one. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna kind of make a line that goes like this, and then we're gonna drag away like that. And you can use this brush like this. Quit shifting there, little devil. Or you can use a large filbert brush. You could do the same thing. So holding on here like this and pushing away like that. You can see the filbert brush is also pretty good at this as well. Okay, looks good. Now we're gonna go ahead and lift up like that. Put that off to the side there. And what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and get a little bit of some white. So you have a pink plate and you have a um, white plate that you're gonna be having later on, but I'm kind of mixing them on here just to save room for myself. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the white and what we're gonna do here is we're going to highlight the little tongue so it looks kind of wet. And all you're gonna do is put, you're gonna turn your brush sideways and drag across like that. Same thing, drag across like this, and then kind of go down a little bit like that. So you're kind of blending downward. So you're grabbing some of the paint, pulling it down like that. Cute. And if you really want to, you can drag through some of your pink like so, and add some gentle highlights. They're just a lighter color pink. So add a little bit of white to the pink that you have on your paint um, palette and just kind of drag across like that, the top of it. Cute, 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 cute. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and set this off to the side. Make sure to put it in some water. What we're gonna do next is we need to do the teeth. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our teeth. We wanna make sure that our teeth are ready to go. Mine is a little bent here. And I think I accidentally snipped off part of one. Okay. There we go. And what we're gonna do here is we wanna make sure that the teeth come down and we have this area that's of blackness right there. 
So we have to set it right here so we have enough that is in between, like that. And then this is going to be important that we use only the white for this, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get out some white paint. You can just use a little bit from the cache that we gave you. I'm trying to get those clunkers on there like I just did. There you go. All right, and then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna use your filbert brush. Now you can also use a flat brush if you have a flat brush at home like this. That's okay too. Any of the bigger brushes, it's just gonna give you a slightly different look. So I'll actually show you what it looks like with a flat brush, but you don't have to do this. With this brush, you can do it with a fan brush if you want, and clean out your fan brush, or you can go ahead and do it with your filbert brush. So I'm getting right here, I'm stopping right there, holding it down, and I'm pulling up like this. I'm flicking, 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 flicking. For the teeth, you're gonna have to go over it several times, like so. Holding it down and flicking upward like this. And I'm gonna go over that area some more. And I really wanna concentrate the brush pressing right about here like this. And to make sure that you drag forward, you don't go backwards. If you get a little bit extra in the area that's supposed to be black, not the end of the world. So I'm gonna go ahead Bring that up there like this. Being aware not to bring this too high. Adding through here like this. This is one of those things that uh, it's kind of nice to take a break from traditional fine arts, like watercolors and acrylic painting, you know, landscapes. You just kind of chill out, make a grocery gremlin, <laughs> something fun, something silly. Going through here, same thing. And you can see that the paint is changing colors. That is okay, because it's getting darker on the black surface. We use this to our advantage when we're painting. We have a black surface to paint on. It already does some of the shadow work for you, which is pretty awesome. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pull away. Here you go, got some teeth going there. Adorable, totally cute, love it, love it. And now we need to do a similar thing for the one that's down here. And that's gonna kind of come over a little bit into our tongue area, but not too much. So it's gonna be kind of right on the edge there the little teeth part are gonna be right there and we're gonna go down this time. Now I'm gonna to have to get some more white paint because I'm almost out. A little bit there. Um, one thing you wanna make sure to do is to keep this full thickness that we send you. It's not a heavy body paint, it already has water added to it. So you don't wanna make it too juicy, otherwise it's gonna soak through the fabric and it's not gonna look right. So that's kind of important part to remember too. So going through like that, holding it, same as we've been doing. Remembering to kind of keep the line that we flick through about the same all the way down. Because remember we have his little lips that we have to put on, his little goblin lips. Holding through like that. And uh, some people would do this with stippling. They'd use a brush where they go up and down. But I find that um, directional pulling of paint is a little bit easier for something like this because um, stippling tends to get down and then under what you're pulling the paint away from. And in this case, it's a piece of construction paper. And construction paper isn't known for being particularly hardy when it comes to getting wet. So you have to be a little more careful with it. Going through there. All right, looks pretty good to me. Pulling on up, there's our second set of teeth. Oh, you can see it coming together already. Look at how cute. Just wanna give them a little snuggle. Tell them don't eat all my groceries. <laughs> so now what we're gonna do here is we are gonna highlight the teeth a little bit. So you grab one of your brushes, whichever one you want, pick a side and start highlighting your teeth by just adding kind of a line like that. There you go, just like so. 
bring that all the way across like that. You can do the same thing on the bottom ones. I tend to pick the opposite side, even though it doesn't really make a lot of sense. <laughs> I just like the way it looks. We're not being too super serious about monster bag here. Little goblin grocery hoarder. And there you go, it looks cute. And I'm gonna add in just a little bit back more of my wet paint here, a little bit of the white because it faded a little bit. And that's gonna happen, like I said, remember on a black bag. So you have different variations of color that kind of show up. So I'm kind of making a, like a shepherd hook design and then I'm pulling down a little bit. And you can do that with other, any, any brush you have. And a little bit there, a little bit up there, cute, cute, cute. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to take one of my pinks, doesn't really matter which kind, and I'm going to come down to the bottom row here and I'm gonna make kind of a dip design. So it's gonna go across like this, and then it's gonna go down and then back up again. Okay, don't worry about the line being perfect. Not really concerned about it. Okay, so we're gonna add kind of blotches of pink like this. Don't worry, they're gonna dry much darker than that. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing up here, but this one's gonna kind of go like this, it's gonna be like a lazy M. So we wanna kinda of go like this, like that, and then away, kinda of over the top of our teeth there, like so. There you go, looking adorable, love it. Cute, cute, cute. Okay, and what we're gonna do next is, this is kind of an easy part here, you wanna get off the extra from your paintbrush here. You don't have too much on there, like that. And what you're gonna do is you're going to gently dust some of this pink in here like this, going across. And it will kind of naturally start to pick up in the middle, like so, and keep going across in the middle. This is a really good one to do with um, the fan brush, if you have a fan brush. Also works really great with a filbert. I'll show you what I mean by fan brush here. I'm gonna get the extra out here. This is nice because it um, has a gentler kind of tip to it like that. So very gently, see how quickly it builds up little dust particles like this. You can turn it sideways and scrub it like that. All right, looks cute. And if you really want to, in the middle, you can get just a teensy little bit of white. Don't get too much, mix it with a little bit of pink and kind of go like this, like that. It'll kind of bring it out a little bit. Now set that off to the side. And what we need to do up here is we need to add a little bit of white on top of our lip that's up there. So we're gonna go ahead and grab some white, mix it with the pink you already have in there, it doesn't matter. Go a little bit above it, like this. Little dashes. We're gonna do the same thing down here, underneath this line right there, little dashes. Now, don't get overwhelmed. Remember that at any point in this video, you can stop, okay? And ultimately, you can make this even simpler. You don't have to add any highlights or anything like that unless you want to, okay? So, put our brush off the side now, our four beat up little brushes, and what we're gonna do is we're going to pour out the rest of the paint that you have that's left over in your cup that you have. I'm just gonna put more on here from my bottle. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to use one of my brushes to lay the white paint out flat like this and so that it has a nice thick layer like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the top of the cup that has been given to you. I'm going to gently tap it down here like this and making sure to just pull straight up and down like this. So I don't want to go back and forth and scoop like that because I'll get weird chunks of paint on the inside. So we want to use it as a stamper only. This is important. Okay, so you have a nice line there. What you're gonna do is you're gonna center your eyeball, hold it down, gently kind of wiggle it like this, hold your bag, pull straight up. Cute, 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 cute. Looks like I got a little spray of something. That's all good. Okay, so. What's next is you take a small brush, like a little filbert brush. We said we would need a little guy like this at some point, remember? A small detail brush of any kind. 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of our white and we are going to go around in a circle like this. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, don't worry. Just do your best. And you can even leave little bits kind of more blank like that. It actually ends up looking cooler than if it's a flat paint. Going around like this. I tend to use one side a lot heavier like that. I like the way it looks. A little bit there. Oh, I think it needs a little bit thicker on this side. What do you think? There we go. Cutie. Okay, so we have the outside of the eyeball now. And now what we need to do is we need to make some highlights. So pick a spot and set down kind of a block with paint like that. Find another spot. And before you put down another blob of paint, get the extra paint off of your brush like this. You don't want very much left at all. See how it's just starting to make a little bit of a ruckus with paint there? Very little. I'm gonna start here and I'm going to dust across sideways like this, the eye. Back and forth like that. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add in another highlight. You can be anywhere you want. I kind of like to put little guys in like that. And then if you want his eye to look kind of wet, like he's about to cry or he's kind of excited, you can add little dots towards the bottom of his eye like that. It looks like water. <laughs> I like it. Cute, looking good so far. Now what we're gonna do here is we have to add the little bits of hair at the top of his head, okay? So you're gonna go back and get your uh, fan brush or if you have a flat brush like this, that works too. This one already has some paint on it. <laughs> so flat brush literally looks like a square and it's flat on both sides, okay? And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to kind of make little stamps like this. And it's gonna kind of mimic the shape that's over here except dipping, it's gonna go up like that. This kind of gives us an idea, a little bit easier visual marker. There you go. Cute. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your brush, turn it sideways, and make flicks like this. So you plant it, and you make little flicks. When you run out of paint, go back and get more. So you plant it down, flick. You're going to just do this a ton of times like that until you start to build up some stuff there. Go through like so. So you get your little hairs on his little head. Little bag head. <laughs> cute, cute, cute. You can also flick like this where you turn it the thick way and flick upward. Kind of give you some more fill there. Notice how I'm not going individual stroke like this. There's no need for that. You want it to be kind of chaotic and fun. This is not that kind of thing. Let it go. There you go. Fun, fun, fun. Cute, cute, cute. All right. Now he's looking a little lonely over there. His eyeballs kind of starting to get a little bit darker. So I'm going to brighten it up again. Just a little bit like that going around. A little bit over here. There you go. Now we need some love in the middle. You can use one of your bigger brushes, any big brush you want. I'm gonna use this guy here, because I'm a fan. Huh, I'm a fan with the fan brush. Womp, womp, womp. I'm gonna get the extra off like this. To see when it starts to dust your paper, it's ready. So you're gonna start from the side and gently dust towards the middle like this. Don't worry if it picks up some lines there, it's fine. It's a bag, it's gonna happen. It's not a black canvas. Going back and forth, like so. There you go. And if you want to feel particularly saucy, I guess you can start adding in a little bit like that, here and there. It's not in the original, but if you want to have some fun with it, like that. And you can add some uh, extra pink in throughout if you want to kind of spice it up a little bit more. Just press a little heavier when you're doing this. Make sure to avoid your eye, don't go into your eye. You can go a little bit around it if you want. 
like so. Lovely. And if you're peeling, feeling particularly saucy, you can grab a little bit of this pink and even put like a little line up here, like a little eyelid or something, maybe down here too. That's if you want. Go ahead and have fun with this, add some extra stuff, but that's all there is to it. That's your monster bag. It's, it's pretty easy, there's a couple of steps. Just remember to have fun, use the brushes that you have, and if ultimately you don't have any brushes, you can get some from Dollar Tree. They're cheap, just take a look on them. You can get some at um, Amazon too for very cheap, maybe a couple bucks, three or four dollars, maybe five at the very most. And brushes you can keep around that will be useful little things like this. They're not for super high quality fine art projects, they're for crafting, fun things like this. So I hope you had a great time making Monster Bag. I know I did. I'll see you next time at DSI Art Ed Series. Don't forget to check out all our other videos. There's so much to learn. <laughs>